Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. On today's video, I've got a few neat stories for you here. We've got a, a, a rumor here that HSBC may be using XRP for cross-border transactions. It is speculation, but it's a new story nonetheless, so I'm willing to cover it. And uh, the interesting thing is the, the source for this, it's the source that called in advance that uh, MoneyGram uh, would officially be using XRP, Next Rapid, partnering with Ripple. And that turned out to be true. So, fascinating. We'll see if... Uh I'll, I'll cover the story here in a moment, and uh, we'll see if this comes to pass. Uh, also, uh, there's a word of, from uh, uh, SBI Holdings. The CEO Yoshitaka Katao of SBI Holdings, uh, he's still with the, the company, but uh, he stepped down from something. So I'm going to share that story with you as well. And then we've got a price prediction from the crypto attorney. He uh, he covers XRP uh, seemingly almost exclusively. I just followed the guy on Twitter today, but I came across him on, uh, on YouTube, I don't know, at some point a week or so ago. And uh, he's calling for a bullish movement in terms of XRP price. He thinks it's going to touch closer to 50 cents soon, much sooner than later. So I'll cover that for you as well as a few other little items. But uh, before we get going here, if you would please delicately tap that like button and go ahead and subscribe. Subscribe if you're a fan of Ripple and or XRP because this is an XRP-centric channel here. And by the way, I do want to mention as we sit here recording this, Bitcoin has topped the $12,000 mark, and the market caps back up to $340 billion. And I don't care how long it takes, XRP price will be moving up as well. That's not, uh, that's not financial advice, though. I'm not a financial advisor. It's just my humble opinion as a, with a non-financial background within the XRP community. But anyway, so here's the story from AMB Crypto. Could HSBC be planning to use XRP for faster and more efficient payments across borders? And this is from today. And I do like that they state right off the bat here. I'm going to read this to you. They, they're talking about it being uh, pure speculation. They're right. Clean the dust off your tinfoil hats because this is an article based on pure speculation and rumors circulating crypto Twitter. This article attempts to connect the dots to arrive at a probable partnership between the banking giant HSBC and Ripple and the use of XRP ledger by the banking giant. And by the way, before we go any further, HSBC... I, uh, I googled them real quick just to get a, a couple quick tidbits about them. I knew they were absolutely gigantic. So uh, according to this initial Google response here, HSBC Holdings PLC is a British multinational banking and financial services holding company. It was the seventh largest bank in the world by 2018 and the largest in Europe with total assets of $2.558 trillion with a T. That's absolutely massive, and they got $53.8 billion in terms of uh, revenue for USD dollars in 2018. So, uh, yeah, they're big. So if this, if this were actually accurate, uh, this would be a big deal. So I'm going to read through the speculation, and then I'm going to give you my two cents on it. So the piece continues here. The dots. Before addressing the actual rumor, one needs to know that HSBC has been constantly using the nascent technology, distributed ledger technology, DLT, for facilitating payments across borders. While it hasn't clearly mentioned the use of a particular product, it could be Ripple, XRP, Corda, or an in-house developed blockchain. In 2018, HSBC's Joshua Crocker explained that HSBC was ready to do a live transaction using DLT, and that it wouldn't be a one-off transaction, even though the technology is still nascent, and that they would have a working product by the next year. Okay, so that was 2018, and it is the next year. Okay, so that's something. Uh, in 2019, HSBC announced that it had successfully settled more than 3 million FS transactions, and made more than 150,000 payments worth $250 billion using distributed ledger technology. HSBC's Richard Bibby, uh, the uh, interim global head of FX and commodities at HSBC added. So here's a quote from him. The global cross-border nature of HSBC and its clients sees us conducting thousands of foreign exchange transactions within the bank across multiple balance sheets in dozens of countries. HSBC FX everywhere uses distributed ledger technology to drastically increase the efficiency of those internal flows. All right. And so if you go down here, and then you got the uh, the actual rumor here, as they title it here, and it came from the Crypt Hawk. And he, this guy tweeted out, uh, XRP, I don't remember, did I tell you about HSBC going for XRP Ledger soon? And, uh, and so then the piece continues after citing that tweet here. This is just a random user, question mark? Maybe, but the user was also right about the rumor of MoneyGram and Ripple's partnership weeks before it actually happened. However, according to the tweets, HSBC 
will be going for XRP Ledger soon. XRP Ledger is a decentralized cryptographic ledger powered by a network of peer-to-peer -peer servers via a consensus protocol. Apart from facilitating almost instant settlement of XRP, XRPL is also being leveraged by Ripple's XRapid, Forte, a gaming company to build a decentralized economic platform for in-game transactions and others. And there's another tweet from Cryptalk, the guy that uh, said, hey, H HSBC going to be using XRP Ledger. And this tweet says, XRP. If PR goes as planned, you should get uh, hard or wet with some good news incoming next week. Yeah. So uh, that was on the 7th, which was yesterday. So not, not this week, but, uh, but next week. Uh, we should be hearing something if this guy is actually accurate. And if not accurate, uh, no more credibility, even though this guy accurately called MoneyGram, apparently uh, partnering up with the Ribble. So that, that is something. And then uh, another Twitter user, at XRP commented, If they use the XRP ledger, that will usurp MoneyGram using XRP and flows via XRapid by a magnitude of dozens. Uh, yeah, probably at least dozens. They're absolutely massive, so that would be kind of a big deal. And then the piece uh, ends by stating, so the idea of HSBC using XRP Ledger, which is capable of handling more than settling XRP transactions, is not too far-fetched. However, it will only be clear if the rumor was true when the actual announcement occurs or doesn't. Okay, so here, here's my two cents on this. I think that if you fast-forward way down the road, it makes tons of sense for very large banks to be utilizing Ripple's X-Rapid technology. I'm very skeptical about a large bank jumping on as one of the initial adopters for X-Rapid utilizing XRP. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know. I mean, maybe this guy's actually right, and he knows something. It could, I mean, how could he have this much insider information, though? So maybe he got lucky about the whole MoneyGram thing. He just said it. and was like, oh, my God, he said something that's true. Who knows? <laughs> who, who knows? Seriously. But, you know, for instance, um, Ashish, Ashish Birla, he's, he's one of the original Ripple employees from back in, what was it, like 2012 when, when the company was founded. And I think they're originally called OpenCoin. I believe that was the original name. Then it became Ripple Labs and then just Ripple. But uh, he's the senior vice president of something. I can never remember his freaking title for some reason. But Ashish has stated publicly, uh, I've seen him speak about this in videos, about how they were initially going after very large banks like Citibank and then uh, they were never getting anywhere with it. And they eventually realize that their primary target customer is never going to be a large bank. Well, I shouldn't say never. It, it, right now, it's, it's not the target. It just isn't because it, the reason is very simple. The, the, uh, the, the largest banks out there, like, like Citi, and I'm sure it's true for HSBC, uh, they've got treasuries around the world that are, well, first of all, massive and uh, seemingly, as, as far as you can go with uh, existing technology, at least prior to blockchain, as efficient as one could imagine they, they be, given that you have to have uh, pre-funded accounts all over the world. And so, uh, you know, the smaller banks don't have that. The smaller banks don't have pre-funded accounts all over the world. They don't have the financial means to, to do that. And so if they want to conduct cross-border transactions for their customer base, they have to tap into the liquidity of larger banks, which means that they have to pay fees to their larger competitors. So... Uh, you know, the larger banks that are making money from all of this, uh, they'd rather keep the status quo going is, is the, the gist that I got from listening to Sheesh Burla speak about this. And so I don't, I don't, you know, they've fine. They've got relationships, uh, professional relationships, and I'm sure all sorts of major bankers all over the world. But I, man, I'd just be shocked if one of their first major announced partnerships was from a big bank like this. I think it's much more likely that you're going to see the smaller competitors that no longer want to feed their larger competitors. I think those are the types of banks and financial institutions you're going to see jump on board, utilizing a blend of X current and X rapid technology first. So that's my two cents on this. So I. I am highly skeptical of this, but it's in the news, and people are already talking about it all over Twitter. So, of course, I'm covering it, but uh, I'm just saying I, I don't buy this. I, I just, I'm just i not saying it's not because there's, there's no evidence to, to support it one way or the other, but uh, highly, highly skeptical. So we'll, we'll just see. I mean, if this does happen, I'll, I'll be just as thrilled as you, seriously, because it would be absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, when will banks, large banks like this, when will it make sense for them to utilize uh, X rapid technology to actually use XRP as a means for settling. Well, uh, once once the well has dried up, once the largest uh, um, 
the, the largest banks in the world are no longer making a necessary or, or adequate fees from their smaller competitors, it will no longer make sense at some point. There will be a tipping point where it no longer makes sense for them to have pre-funded accounts all over the world just for themselves. They'd rather, at some point, presumably, they'd rather unlock their dormant capital and use it for something else. That's just dormant capital. And you could do any number of things with that to, to grow your actual business. So uh, still, even, even if, in theory, if their transactions were just as efficient as what Ripple's technology can offer, it still doesn't make sense. To uh, to have that dormant uh, capital just sitting around, but I don't think that they'll be just as efficient because there are all these layers of, of human management that you're just not going to need anymore, and that's where most of the cost savings comes from. You just don't need all of these intermediaries taking a cut and the uh, humans along the way that are facilitating these transactions. That's actual labor that doesn't need to take place thanks to Ribble technology. So that's my two cents on it. Uh, what do you think? Feel free to drop a comment below. Um, Next, next piece up here, and this is from uh, Alex Cobb's website, the XRP Daily. And I don't read whole articles ever, but this thing is so freaking short that if I didn't read the whole thing, I'd give you like half a thought. So I'm going to read this whole thing. I'm going to break my little rule for this one little piece here because it's so short here. But uh, this is from today, and Alex uh, titled this piece, uh, Presentation Showing Crucial Information from Ripple Has Been Removed. On March 13th, 2019, valued XRP community member uh, Neil J. Duncan posted this tweet revealing some crucial information in regards to financial institutions using RippleNet. And the tweet states, Ripple's Opportunity, Largest Global Payments Service, American Bankers Association. And again, this is March 13th from this year. Then the piece continues. This is a presentation from the American Bankers Association who recently held an event where Ripple was on stage talking about digital assets in cross-border payments. And the panel video of, of tran or transcripts have not been released to the public. The significant part is that on the bottom right of the slide, instant money transfer example, Ripple. Based on the names being shown there, you could see where XRP investors would get excited. Now, this is just an example on a slide, but in my experience, when Ripple makes examples of payment flows through RippleNet, they usually use the names of the actual institutions they are working with, as well as the connected exchanges. So now, if you try to access the slideshow through the original tweet, the presentation and all of the slides have been removed. If this were just uh, examples, why, why was it removed? I'm leaning towards the fact that it was most likely because of this specific slide with Ripple. You can take the original link and put it uh, into Wayback Archive and see the presentation. The other slides did not reveal any sort of crucial information. And so I will say this. It's strange that they would just remove that. And uh, this piece, what he's stating here, this this is not speculation. But taking this data, you could speculate on top of that if you want to. And what does that actually mean? Was there actually some sort of partnership going on that uh, they... They, they actually didn't want known after they made it public or something like this. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to speculate in that uh, direction, although I, I'm, I think that others, some others have on Twitter. Uh, not that Alex did that. Alex was just, you know, he reported something, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but, but does it actually mean something? Eh, I'm not so convinced of that. There's a fair bit of speculation going on today. Uh, this next piece uh, apparently is not speculation, though. This is about uh, SBI holding CEO Yoshitaka Katao. And this came out four days ago on the 4th, and I didn't hear about it until today. Uh, I think part of the reason is, apparently, if you go to the actual link here, assuming this is, this is properly reported, because this is from CryptoNews.com, there is an actual announcement. And if you click on it, which I did, uh, it's all in Japanese. And then your browser can translate it, which I did. But it was so broken when I did it that I couldn't make out an actual story from it. So the translator, uh, maybe uh, maybe there's some work to be done on that so that it works in a more efficient way at some point down the road. So tough to verify. But I could see that this is not potentially widespread if uh, pretty much the news is kept in Japan. But uh, this news source is, is putting out here. So I'm just going to report it to you, uh, assuming that this is actually accurate here. Uh, it is news. So it states, the CEO of Japan's SBI group, Yoshitaka Katao, has stepped aside as the head of the self-governing Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association, JVCEA, just over two weeks after he was re-elected to the role. Katao is one of the most influential figures on the Japanese cryptocurrency and uh, conventional finance scene and serves as a board member at Ripple. Last month, SBI announced that Katao was also appointed as an advisor to the China Investment Association's blockchain board. 
Now, here's, here's what it states here as far as evi- uh, like reason for this. Neither the JVCEA nor SBI have explained why Katow has decided to step aside, but per Nikai, the former JVCEA president may have stepped down in an effort to even out the number of industry representatives uh, on the JVCEA's board. And so I don't think that this is a sign of anything bad per se. It's news, so I'm happy to report it, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't glean too much from this, assuming it's, it is completely accurate here. Uh, he's still the CEO of SBI Holdings. He's been one of the most ardent supporters of uh, Ripple and XRP. He's been very vocal in particular about uh, how he, ser- he sees XRP playing a pivotal role in global finance as time passes here. So none of that has changed. And, uh, you know, SBI virtual currency is still a thing. Everything's cool there. So I, I think we're A-OK. Now this, I want to see, this has been going all over Twitter today. And this is another, I normally don't have so many things that are like speculation here. But, OK, technically the way this is being reported is, is, is actual news. But they're the only source. I Googled and I could not find any other source to confirm this. And I, I'm not familiar with the site, coinjazeera.news. So I'm going to just just take it for what it's worth. If this is true, it's disappointing. And I want to know why this happened. But the story is... Warren Buffett cancels lunch date with Tron CEO Justin Sun. And so for those of you that don't know, Justin Sun, the, uh, again, the Tron CEO, he, uh, he donated a bunch of money to charity. It's a, a charity that uh, Buffett's running. And it was something like $4.5 million. And then one of the things you get since you, you, know, you, you donate to the charity and you're the, the largest contributor, largest single contributor, is you get a lunch with Warren Buffett. And so everybody's been joking about how ridiculous it is because Warren Buffett is the most anti-Bitcoin, anti-crypto person just about on the planet, you know. He's up there with, like, Nouriel Rabini, pretty much, and, and Peter Schiff, I guess. But uh, anyway, so he had this, this lunch that was supposed to be happening, and, um, you, you know, and, a, and this news story is stating that it's canceled. And it states, so I'll just read the, the top part here. In a shocking announcement, Coin Jazeera has just learned that the legendary Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, has decided to pull out of his planned lunch date on the 25th of July with infamous Chinese crypto scammer and Martin Screlly's Asian cousin, Justin Sun. The lunch was set to be held at Kinsey Restaurant in San Francisco, chosen by Justin in the hope that the putrid air of the dystopian city would be so hazardous to the old man he'd shut up and buy Tron to get away. And so, um, <laughs> you know, by the way it's worded, I'm, I'm kind of skeptical as to whether or not this is true and nobody else has reported it. You think that this would be more major news. So if this is some sort of like um, joke article or joke piece, that's fine if that's what the website is. If anybody has confirmation one way or another, please drop it below because I don't know everything. But nonetheless, I found this, this fascinating. So thought I'd share it with you. Uh, next piece here, this is from Peter Pumpkin Eater on Twitter. And uh, he put a, a fun little graphic here, and I wanted it to, uh, to use this to make a point here. And it's uh, hashtag XRPs and then volume through the years. And so you can take a look at this, and it's got the volume from, uh, went back to, it looks like the, probably the tail end of 2013, beginning of 2014, whatever that is there. And all the way through, uh, you know, pretty much today. <laughs> and you can see the overall trend is upward. And, and so, it, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting to me because the adoption that we're seeing here, it is real. Uh, this this volume here, this is almost entirely from, from speculators, but this, you know what this voice is, is confidence in XRP in general, the, the fact that there's uh, this, this much activity on an upward trend for a prolonged period of time, uh, you know, price aside, you know, that goes flat for whatever period of time it, just, it, it may be, and I've talked about in previous videos, so I'm not going to rehash that concept in this moment, but look at the overall upward trend in volume, it just, it's, it's been non-stop. And so I question, like, if you, the reason I want to bring this up is there have been a lot of concerns about XRP price lately. And I just want to say this. Uh, um, if, if you're concerned, what, this, let me ask you this, just completely analytically, just take the emotion out of it, forget the fact that you've invested whatever you've invested in XRP if you have. Do you think it likely or not that this, trans, uh, this trend, this upward trend in terms of actual transactions on the ledger will continue or not? If you were to look one, two, three, four, five years out. If the answer is yes, then it means a couple of things. First of all, continued speculations, because that's part of the way the ecosystem is going to play out. People put money in because they have faith that the XRP ledger is going to continue to be developed on top of by multiple developers, not just Ripple, and that XRP will actually be used as a result. And then as it gets used as a result by various businesses, that means that X- XRP actually has to be purchased to be used within the ecosystem, and that affects supply and demand. And so th- the point I wanted to make, that's the reason I'm pulling this up, because I haven't talked about um, volume as much um, lately anyway, and I haven't shown a graphical representation of it. So as soon as I saw this, I was like, 
you guys need to just look at this because I, I feel like there's a lot of fear out there. And I just don't feel like there should be. This is not financial advice, but to me, like I am, I'm not having a hard time with this whatsoever. The price action of XRP, not one bit, you know? So I thought I'd share that with you. Uh, next piece here, and this is from Jack the Rippler, and he writes, boom, everyone will use XRP. And here's a quote from Brad Garlinghouse, and I thought this was cool, so I wanted to share it with you because it's exactly in line with what I've been saying, and it's coming from Ripple's CEO. And the, the, the quote is, there's a very positive association between the price of XRP and the price of Bitcoin, but these technologies are both free, open, sourced. It's early. Over time, you will see a shrewd market and behaviors that reflect that. And that's exactly in line with what I've been saying. It's not about the price today. It's about the price years and years and years from now, the actual adoption years and years and years from now. And what does that come down to? If we're talking about a shrewd market, what does Brad Garlinghouse mean by that? He means that there has to be actual utility, there has to be actual use, and, and the people that are shrewd in their decision-making process are going to value that. That's simply it. And that's, that's exactly what I've been saying. He's saying the, delivering the same message with different words. And, and that's exactly why I'm so bullish and happy to throw my actual money into XRP as a very long-term investment, and I'm never going to sell all of my XRP. I have too much fun following it, and I just think that it could be worth a crazy amount of money down the road because I foresee the crypto asset class being valued as a multi-trillion dollar asset class, and I can foresee a future where some of the coins that are the biggest winners, I could foresee some of them, hopefully XRP is one of them, uh, I could see some of those coins having multi-trillion dollar caps all on their own. If they, if they have the right level of utility, I can absolutely absolutely see that. And it's it's not an absurd concept. Uh, just consider when you're talking about the dot com boom and bust. Yeah, okay. There's a lot of fluff, and the you know the bubble got all up to like six trillion before it popped. But you did have some winners come out of that, didn't you? Didn't you have like uh, didn't you have Google? Didn't you have Uber? Didn't you have Facebook? You know, some of these companies are, are worth you know. How much is Google worth? Is it like half a trillion at this point or something like that? So these are crazy high dollar figures. But then you consider that the crypto asset class, which will have staying power. I'm fully confident of that. It's only worth $340 billion today. Yeah. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit and see what that looks like. And so what I'm trying to do is, is, is pick the winners. And to me, it couldn't seem more obvious unless something changes. And I reserve the right to change my opinion. But as it stands today, uh, there, there, there aren't many coins that have any actual utility and are actually being developed on in top of by developers in, in any meaningful way. And so I stand behind my position. All right, next piece here, and this is from the crypto attorney. This is the part piece that I, one of the pieces that I teased at the beginning of the video, and he tweeted this out. So it's, it's some technical analysis here, which I, like I say, every time I bring up price and stuff, I, I am not a technical analyst. I'm more of a long-term guy. I'm, I'm investing based on fundamentals. I do understand the fundamentals when it comes to short-term price action and uh, technical analysis. I know essentially nothing. But I'm still happy to share it with you because just like you, I'm very interested in the topic. I think it's fun. So I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Okay, and he, he tweets out, okay, so the XRP chart is still bullish-ish, if that makes any sense. The $0.38 cent support line, red line, is holding strong. However, if we settle over the 42 cent line, blue line, in the next week, we are back on track in a bull flag and should bounce to 48 cents. And so I'll pull up the full picture here that he drew. So this is this is the trend line. This is what he sees happening uh, likely in, in the short term here. And so um, I know everybody wants to get the price, the, the price to get back to all time highs, but hey, you know, if, if it jumps up to 48 cents, and what is it now, 40 cents today? That's what I had pulled up, right? Didn't I say that just over, let me pull this up, live coin much? Yeah, it's just over 40 cents here. So, you know, it's almost a 25% increase if that happens. Like, that would be, uh, that'd be kind of big, would it not? So, <laughs> it would be something heading in the right direction here. But the way I still see things, that there's going to be a lot of volatility um, d during the course of this current bull market that we are entering. And uh, I, I still, long term, I won't be surprised if it's still, you know, even if this happens, if the price of XRP more or less kind of stays flat for a long period of time. And I want to remind you of this. In 2017, during that huge bull run, XRP's price started uh, the year 2017 at half a penny. By May, it got up to, I think it was around May, it got up to like 40 cents, and then it got as low again as like 15 cents, not too long after that. And then it spent like half a year hovering around mostly the 20 cent range. It got a little higher, a little lower, whatever. But that's about where it was for half a year. And if you were so impatient that you couldn't wait half a year, you missed XRP going all the way up to its all-time high of $3.92. I'm, I'm going to sit tight, okay? <laughs> Especially since this is money that, um, I, you know, if, if I lose it, if I lost 100% of it, I'm fine. This is not my retirement plan. So I'm happy to sit on this and let um, people that panic sell just let them do their thing. I'm letting humans behave as humans, and I'm going to just sit on my investment. That, that's just what I personally am doing. 
All right, and then uh, this is another tweet. This is from uh, XRP Jamist. Uh, has anyone ever wondered why XRP has 100 billion coins versus all other coins? It's simple, my friends, liquidity. Supply and demand, the supply is high and demand low at the present, but soon that will be reversed. Once the uh, FI and uh, if start, start uh, sourcing XRP, it will surpass all others, FI being financial institutions. Right. And so, uh, you know, people have stated, like, how could this ever have any sort of really high multi-trillion dollar valuation uh, as an asset class in terms of market cap? How could XRP achieve that? Because there's so many of them. And there are a number of reasons. I'll cite a couple of them for you just off the top of my head here. Do you realize that uh, when people are, are speculating, they're buying into this? You know, um, well, first of all, the amount of money that, that goes into this um, let me actually let me say this first. The when people invest into the cryptocurrencies, if if you buy that, first of all, a lot of people are long term. They aren't just buying and then selling three days later. And and this, what I'm about to tell you, it's kind of true for for probably most cryptos. Um, but I, I remember reading a survey at some point during 2018, and it stated something along the lines of this isn't XRP exclusively, but no doubt it would be true for XRP as well. I have no reason to believe otherwise anyway. But it was something like 95 percent of all crypto on the planet was not being traded on it wasn't on exchanges it, it was not being traded on on exchanges it was just it was just being held in wallets and that and that was it and so you kind of figure so what's available like what's necessary for xrp to be used how much do you need how much xrp do you actually need in order for xrb to be actually adopted and I, I think that if you're trying to calculate, first of all, it's a fool's errand. You're never going to try to be able to figure it out. But let me tell you why. It's for a different reason than what, what you might think. The amount of XRP that is needed to conduct con uh, transactions as Ripple would like to see done on a global level with their X-Rapid technology, uh, that has nothing to do with what the actual price will be. Uh, because humans are going to throw in money and, and choose uh, what would otherwise be seemingly a, an arbitrary market value. It's just the same is true with stocks. So it's if you have confidence, you invest in, invest in the stock. And so if, if you're investing in XRP, it's not because people are sitting there calculating how much is needed to be used, as again, as a fool's errand, because there's too many moving parts to that. And you will not be able, able to ever calculate how much is exactly needed at any moment. And even then, it's a moving target. So it's kind of silly to even try and figure that out. Rather, if something has actual use, that is what will cause confidence. And if people are looking to utilize XRP as a store of value in particular, which is what I'm essentially doing, I'm keeping money in there for the long haul, hoping it's, it appreciates, but at a minimum will re retain its value, right? Uh, you know, if you're, if you're doing that, well, you're, you're not sitting there trying to calculate it. So, so this is just not how humans are going to behave. So when there's FUD out there, which I've heard many times, which is you just don't need XR that much XRP because it's that fast. Well, first of all, most of it is not even available on exchanges and it, it, it doesn't take into, so you can't even like buy and sell it and utilize it through XRapid. It's just not available on exchanges, not available for sale. And then, the, the, like the other, like I said, the other part of that is this is not how humans behave. And so to not include that in your factoring makes no sense whatsoever. All right, uh, next piece. And I don't have too much to say on this yet. Uh, this was just tweeted out a few hours ago by Pomp, but I'm going to look into this. I just didn't see a news article attached, but it kind of relates to the, the concept of uh, what I was talking about yesterday. I, was, I, I had a little video about um, Bitcoin, Pompliano, Anthony Pompliano, he thinks that Bitcoin is going to be the global reserve currency the world over. You know, you don't need the U.S. dollar anymore, basically. And so he tweeted this out. Breaking. China has received internal approvals to create a central bank digital currency and has already started building it. Let the global arms race for digital currency supremacy begin. And so I want to see news on this before I can form a, an opinion on this. But, I, you know, we've talked about for a long time uh, you know, central banks creating cryptocurrency versions of their own uh, their own fiat currencies. And what problem is that actually solving? Because right now, what you already got, like even with the United States dollars, yeah, some of it's printed, but it's still, by and large, the, the transactions, it's all it's all digital. It's all numbers on a ledger. You know, mo most of what's being circulated, it's not like it's all done through cash or something like that. And so what what is there to be gained here? You still have a central authority controlling it. Uh, you, you still have the opportunity, I'm sure, to, to cr print more of this cryptocurrency out of thin air at, at, at will, uh, just, just as is done today. You know, the, the central governments do that. You know, the U.S. government does that, which is tantamount to an inflation because it affects supply and demand. You might as well just tax the people. It's, it's, it's the same effect, frankly. 
And, uh, and, and so what problem does this solve? Eh. I mean, if there's an argument to be made that it's better for the government because it somehow, somehow like increases efficiency in some way, okay, super duper, but I don't see this as revolutionary for the people that are currently using fiat currency. And I, I, I just I don't see how this will do anything to secure uh, financial so- sovereignty for any specific government. So I want to see I want to hear what the uh, opposing viewpoint is on that, so I can flesh out my own opinion. But those are my initial thoughts on it. Um, again, I don't have a firm opinion on this, so I can be swayed. But right now, I'm just thinking, who cares? And so I, that's why I want to seriously. As soon as there's more on this, I'll be happy to share it with you after I've had an opportunity to hear the counterpoint and form an opinion. And there's another piece from Pomp here, and I like this. Because uh, it, re- it made me exactly think about uh, the negativity uh, th- from some people and the despair within the XRP community. And this is not to poke fun at you if you've been having trouble emotionally with this. You're, it's not like there's something wrong with you or anything like that. I totally get it. You got your money invested in it, and it's scary when the price goes down, and you can get frustrated if it just seems flat for too long a period of time. And so I do respect you, and I understand where you're coming from. So I just want to say that. But uh, Pomp, he, he put this out. He wrote, uh, via tweet, the best Bitcoin investors are really good at doing nothing for long periods of time. Bam! Couldn't agree with that more. Same is true for XRP investors. And that's why, remember what I just cited a moment ago about how XRP went from half a cent in 2017 to 40 cents, down to about 15%, uh, 15 cents roughly before half a year later, get, roughly getting to its all-time high of $3.92. If you wanted to make money on that, what did you have to do? Nothing for a long period of time. That's the point I wanted to make, and that's why I was happy to share this with you. So I think Pomp's right on with this. And the same's true for, for Bitcoin also. I just count on other people not being able to be patient, not being just, I, I fully count on them losing, a whole bunch of people losing faith, and that's part of what pushes the price up over time. But I have confidence in, in fundamentals, and that is why I'm here. So I don't care. It does not emotionally impact me. And uh, last piece, and uh, this is just for fun. This is a fun way to end the video because it made me laugh when I read this, so I wanted to share it with you. This is from Ripple Ninja, and he tweeted out, I'm going to keep accumulated XRP till my ledger balance looks like an international telephone number. <laughs> it just made me laugh, so I was like, okay, much respect, good sir. Much respect. You keep accumulating this. So, anyway, uh, that's all I got for you in this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea.